Hello and welcome to this another chapter of this subject, uh, Principles and Theories of Language Acquisition and Learning. So for this video, I'm going to start talking about the schools of thought in second language acquisition. So speaking of schools of thought, of course, we are going to define what a school of thought is. Okay, so a th school of thought is an intellectual tradition. So it's the perspective of a group of people who share common characteristics of opinion or outlook of a philosophy, discipline, belief, social movement, economics, cultural movement, or art movement. But in this case, of course, we are talking about language acquisition and learning. So I'm going to start uh, talking about... Okay, yes, so you see it in the title, Structural Linguistics and Behavioral Psychology. So, of course, we're going to define the key phrases there. We have the Structural Linguistics and Behavioral Psychology. Let's start with Structural Linguistics. So, in the 1950s, the Structural or Descriptive School of Linguistics with its advocates Leonard Bloomfield, Edward Sapir, Charles Hockett, Charles Fries, and others prided itself in a rigorous application of scientific observations of human languages. So this is the key idea for this school of thought, the application of scientific observations of human languages. Only publicly observable responses could be subject to investigation. The linguist's task, according to the structuralist, was to describe human languages and to identify the structural characteristics of those languages. An important axiom of structural linguistics was that languages can differ from each other without limit and that no preconceptions could apply across language. Okay, so let's go further with that one. Of further importance to the structural or descriptive linguist was the notion that language could be dismantled into small pieces or units and, thus, and that these units could be described scientifically, contrasted, and added up again to form the whole. That's why we're talking about the structure. From this principle emerged an unchecked rush of linguists in the 1940s and 1950s to the far reaches of the earth to engage in the rigorous production of detailed descriptions of exotic languages. So we are going to tackle here another term. We have the surface structure relationships by Noam Chomsky. Okay, but it will be later discussed on another video. So what is the relation of this I am talking about to second language acquisition. In relation with second language acquisition, this school of thought, structural linguistics, is telling us that a human acquires a second language by knowing the grammar structure of that language. Okay? So we have the grammar structure. And we, as English teachers, if we'll have the in-depth study of the grammatical sequences that comprise the sentence, we are studying the surface structure. Oh, we already have the introduction for this one, surface structure. So we're going to have the in-depth study of the grammatical sequences that comprise a sentence. That's what we call uh, studying the surface structure relationships. And that's according to Noam Chomsky. In terms of separate components that comprised a such sentence. Okay, so that's structural linguistics for second language acquisition. Now, how about behavioral psychology? So, behavioral psychology has been established by Russian psychologist Pavlov and American psychologist B.F. Skinner. Behaviorism is the theory that psychology should invoke only observable and measurable phenomena. So, a while ago, for in structural linguistics, it's uh, pertaining to scientific method with observations, of course. We also have here the observation with behavioral psychology. Later on, we're just going to know the difference between those th two schools of thought. Okay? 
So, for other information, Behaviorism originated as a healthy reaction to this state of affairs. The early behaviorists wanted to sweep away what they saw as empty speculation and the endless postulation of undetectable concepts. Okay, so let's have another info for behaviorism. That's behavioral psychology. Behaviorism exercised great influence over the linguist Leonard Bloomfield and the American structuralist who followed him. In 1957, the American psychologist B.F. Skinner published Verbal Be Behavior. It was an attempt at interpreting language acquisition strictly in terms of behaviorism. It was the most radical attempt ever treating language in a behaviorist framework. A behaviorist method of language teaching should embody at least the following principles. It should be firmly anchored in spoken language. Okay? So Pavlov has given the theory of uh, classical conditioning and B. F. Skinner has given the theory of operant conditioning. Okay? So let's have the classical conditioning. This theory is based on the habit formation. Pavlov says that human or any creature gives response due to stimulus. Okay? Stimuli are those things which create excitement in creature. It means that human learn due to stimulus. Pavlov has done one experiment on a dog in which when at first Pavlov rings a bell before a dog and the dog hears it. With it, it is given food, then it drops larva. Just after he rings the bell, then it drops larva. After again, food is given. In this condition, we look that dog is given stimulus and it gives response. Thus, a student can also be taught according to this theory. So, let's have the one that is theorized by B.F. Skinner, Operant Conditioning. Okay, so this theory is also based on the habit formation. B. F. Skinner says that human or any creature gives response due to reinforcement. If a while ago, it's due to the stimulus, this one is reinforcement. He wants to say that human or creature learns due to reinforcement. B. F. Skinner has done experiment on pigeons and rats. When they are reinforced, they get their target or food. It means students can be taught very effectively if they are given proper reinforcement or, in layman's term, follow-up. So this one, the structuralists believe that in the pattern of practice, they say that teachers should motivate to their students so that he could get his all desired objectives. The motivated learner learns fast and effectively. So, we have the five essential points for this one under behavioral psychology or behaviorism. Okay? So, let me just read this. Language is learned only through practice. The more the learner is exposed to the use of language, the better chance of learning it. Another, producing the correct linguistic response to a stimulus loose requires efforts if the learner is not called upon to make this effort there is no learning producing correct response also requires attention the spoken language comes earlier than the written and the passive experience of language is necessary before any productive or active use can begin learning takes place fast if a correct response is given to the students the learner must know at once if his effort is right or wrong. Every new item must be learned by reinforcement by further practice before further learning begins. Okay? So, they need to study such one point in the language before proceeding to the other one. Okay? So, uh, what are the indications of these two theories under the school of thought of second language acquisition. 
So both the structural linguists and the behavioral psychologists were interested in description in answering what questions about human behavior. Objective measurement of behavior in controlled circumstances. Okay, so you could further understand that through this question. If you were to observe someone walking to your house, pick up a chair and fling it through your window and then walk out, different kinds of questions could be asked. One set of questions could relate to what happened. The physical description of the person, the time of day, the size of the chair, the impact of the chair, and so forth. Okay, so the set of questions is very rigorous and exacting. It allows no flow, no mistake in measurement. But does it give you the ultimate answers on how uh, it really happened? So... We are going to have another set of questions related to this instance in another top topic. And that is Generative Linguistics and Cognitive Psychology, another school of thought in second language acquisition. Okay, so these are the references for this topic, Structural Linguistics and Behavioral Psychology. We have one ebook and I used a book, okay? So the ebook is Principles of Language Learning and Teaching, the fifth edition by Douglas Brown. Actually, uh, there is a sixth edition, but I can't have the access to that one. Okay, so it's good if you're going to have it. And then we have Teaching Skills in English Language by Nita Prakash and Kamla Sinha. Okay, so that's it for this topic for this video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.